All right, everybody, I'm back here with another video. And in this video here, I want to talk about something that um, needs to be talked about. Um, I had a conversation with someone on YouTube, and they told me that the devil, he died back in AD 70. So he says that we don't have a devil no more and that there is only the children of disobedience. He said the devil is dead. So what I want to do um, let's talk about does the devil still exist? Now, I'm going to use the Bible and we're going to go from the Bible and we're going to see is the devil dead or does the devil still exist? Now, this particular brother, he gave me the scriptures, which we're going to go to in the book of Revelation, chapter 12. So in Revelation chapter 12, we're going to read verse 12, which says, Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he had but a short time. So this particular person said, used that scripture to say, well, the devil only have or had a short time. And so whenever um, he say, well, God is not going to let this particular, not going to let the devil um, have 2000 years. To basically in order to uh, carry out his wrath on the earth, because the Bible says he have a short time. So he say, well. He's not going to have 2,000 years because he's referring to 2,000 years not being a short time. However, we know that the Bible says that with the Lord, a thousand years are as one day. And one day as a thousand years. So it could be 2,000 years go by, but to God, that's two days. So we cannot determine what's a short time to God or not. But. I, I want to follow through because he gave another scripture. But before we get to that scripture, let's look at Re the same chapter, Revelation chapter 12. Let's look at verse 7. Now, verse 7 says, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and, um, fought and his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So this is talking about the one heaven world, the dragon, the old serpent, who was the devil and Satan, how he was cast to the earth. All right. Then when you go down to what the to verse 12, it tells you how um the devil has come down unto you, talking about the inhabitants of the earth. He says, uh, let's just read it. Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the, see it says rejoice, you heavens, and those that dwell in them. You see, because the devil, is, he's not there no more. So they can rejoice. But he says, woe to the inhabitants of the earth. So, but see, it's different for those on the earth. He says, woe to you. And he says, and the sea. For well, the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. So it's different on earth than it is in heaven. In heaven, they can rejoice. On earth, it's woe to you because the devil has come to you, but he got a short time. All right. So, but as I stated, the Bible says that with the Lord, a thousand years are as one day. So. I don't believe that we can say that 2,000 years is, uh, is not a short time. Why? Because God is not in our time. God sits outside of time. Time is just something for the earth. But with God, the, um, the Bible says that the devil has a short time. In other words, he has a short period where he could be angry with the inhabitants of the earth, where he could try to deceive those on the earth. It's a short period. But well, we don't know what's short. 2,000 years to us sound like a lot. But with God, we cannot ignore the scripture that says, but with the Lord, a thousand years are as one day. So we cannot um, 
overlook that. All right. Now let's continue because I'm going to bring up many scriptures and I want you to really pay attention because I want to see if the devil's dead or is he alive. Let's keep going. Now, he also gave me the book of Hebrews chapter two, because he says uh, that the devil is destroyed. All right. So let's look at Hebrews chapter two. Let's read verse 14. It says, for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. That through death, he might destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil. So he says right there that the devil has been destroyed. He's destroyed. So he no longer exists. He's dead. Because the Bible says that through Jesus' death, he might destroy him that had the power of death. So this particular scripture, as we analyze it, it says that through death, he, meaning Jesus, might destroy him that had the power of it. So when Jesus died, then he will um, destroy the devil that had the power of death, all right? So through Jesus' death, this is how he destroyed the devil, all right? Now, for further clarity on destroying the devil, of course, we know that Jesus, he overcame the devil. We know that through his death because he, uh, he took those keys of death. Now, let's look at Revelation chapter 1 real fast. Revelation chapter 1. Let's look at verse 17 and verse 18. And it says, And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. Am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. So Jesus said that he was he the one that was dead and that's alive, and he got the keys of hell and death. Well, remember when we read in Hebrews, well, how he through his death he would destroy the devil who had the power of death. So through his death, yes, he he destroyed or uh, overcame the um devil. He got the keys from the devil. See, the devil had the power of death. And now Jesus says that he have the keys of hell and death. Why? Because he was dead and is alive. So, but when we say he destroyed the devil, let's get a further understanding of how he destroyed the devil and what he destroyed of the devil. Let's look at 1 John chapter 3 and let's look at verse number 8. 1 John 3 verse 8. And it says, he that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sent it from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifest, that he might destroy the works of the devil. So John says that Jesus destroyed the works of the devil. The Son of God, he was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. So um that's what Jesus destroyed. He destroyed the old works of the devil, but the devil still is overcome. All right. The devil is still overcome by Jesus. But does this mean that the devil no longer exists? That's the whole point we'll be talking about. Now, let's look at. um Let's look at Reve Revelations chapter 20, because I want to see. What it says here, now this is a prophecy. This is the prophecy, all right, that Jesus gave. And I want to see, did this prophecy come to pass? Because this particular passage of scripture is going to give us some insight on, because see, this brother, he told me that the devil is in the lake of fire. So he said that the devil is in the lake of fire. Now, Revelation 20 is going to talk about the devil going to the lake of fire. Well, let's see how this come to pass yet. Revelation chapter 20, story verse 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. 
and he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. All right, so we see that an angel is bound in Satan in the bottomless pit for a thousand years. All right, in verse number three, and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. So now we can even see here, once the angel um, put a seal on the devil and cast him to the bottomless pit, this don't even say he was killed. It says that he put a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And it says, and after that, he must be loosed a little season. See, so he must be loosed. So we can see here that the devil at this point is not dead. He's just, it's a seal upon him. He's cast into the bottom of the spit so that he should deceive the nations no more. Then he must be loosed a little season. All right. So he got to mean he going to be loose from that bottomless pit. Now let's look at verse four. And I saw a throne and they sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, which had not worshiped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So now we can see that the souls of those that were beheaded, for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God. Well, this is their souls. They they were dead. This is their souls. So he said that they were beheaded. If you beheaded, you're not alive. So they were beheaded and and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Well, ask yourself this. Have Jesus, um, is he reigning with others, um, with these people for a thousand years yet? Have this happened yet? So he says, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Verse five, but the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. All right. He says, this is the first resurrection. Now have the first resurrection taken place yet? You have to ask yourself that because we got to make sure we stand true to what the scripture teaches. So I could tell you this, the first resurrection has absolutely not happened yet, which means that those that that those that were beheaded and living with Christ or reigning with Christ for a thousand years, this hasn't happened yet. There has not been a first resurrection yet. OK, so he says, blessed and holy is he that had part in the first resurrection on such the second death had no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Now, let's look at verse seven. He says, and when the thousand years are expired. So now we're talking about once the thousand years come or once they are fulfilled, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Well, remember, the angel set a seal on him, cast him to the bottom of his feet that he should deceive the nation no more till the thousand years were fulfilled. So now once the thousand years are expired, so once they are fulfilled, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth. God and Magog to gather them to battle. So the devil is going to be loose to go out for the purpose of deceiving the nations, which are in the four quarters of the earth. All right. And he says, Gog and Magog to gather them to, together to battle, the number of which, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed or surrounded the camp of the saints about and the beloved city and fire came down now fire comes down from god out of heaven and devours them so it's divine on um, them right all right and, it's, and, and let's go ahead and continue and it says and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are, 
and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. So now the devil, it says that deceived them. Well, well remember, the Bible says in, um, in the devil, um, he, in verse 8, he shall go out to deceive the nations. But this is after the thousand years are expired. The thousand years is when those that was beheaded for Christ um, and, and for the witness of God, for the witness of Jesus and the word of God, they're going to um, they going to live with Christ for a thousand years. And that's the first resurrection. But that has to come before the devil can be released from that prison and go out to deceive the nations. So verse 10 tells us that when the devil, after he go and deceive the nations, he was cast to the lake of fire. But. He haven't went out to deceive the nations after the thousand years because a thousand years haven't even started yet. So Christ is not reigning. In those thousand years with these dead saints. He's not reigning for a thousand years with them yet. That haven't happened yet. All right. There has not been a first resurrection. So the devil don't get cast into the lake of fire and brimstone until after the thousand years are expired and he is able to go out to deceive the nation. So I don't understand um, if a person think this has come to pass yet. Well, when was the first resurrection? Give me the date. Give me the year that the first resurrection ha happened. And those saints have uh, already reigned with Christ for a thousand years. So in order to say that the devil is cast into the lake of fire, then the first resurrection must happen already. All right. Now, I want to um, show you some scriptures now. That because remember, this brother said that the devil, he died. In AD 70. So in AD 70, the devil supposed to have died. But what I want to do is after Jesus died, after Jesus resurrected, his disciples went out into the world to preach. Now let's analyze their words as it pertains to the devil. And I want to use what they say. To see if the devil is dead or, you know, just just follow me. You're going to see what I'm what I'm talking about. In first Peter, chapter five, verse eight, and I got some more scriptures. I really want you to stay along long enough to listen. First Peter, chapter five, verse eight says, be sober. Now, this is this is Peter talking to the people after Jesus already died and went to heaven. So if Jesus destroyed the devil when he died. And resurrected, then let's see why does the disciples go on after Jesus died and resurrected and went back to heaven. Let's analyze why they're talking the way they're about to talk now. So first Peter chapter five, verse eight says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. So how are he going to tell them, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. So if he is dead, how is he going to walk about seeking someone to devour if he dead? Let's look at... um. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. And let's look at verse number 11. So Ephesians 6, 11 says, now this is Paul speaking to the Ephesians. He says, now, and this is after the resurrection of Christ. So he already died, resurrected, went to heaven. Paul come on the scene afterwards and teach the Ephesians saying, saying, Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So 
the wiles of the devil is referring to all the tricks and the schemes of the devil. So why is he telling them to put on the armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil if the devil did? So the devil can't scheme you. He can't put any wiles on you if he's dead. Let's look at um, Ephesians 4, 27. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27. Paul says, well, let's start at 26. He says, be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. So he's telling the people how to be. You could be angry, but don't sin in your anger. All right. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. You can't give place to someone that's dead. So if he's telling them to neither give place to the devil, then that means that they can give place to the devil. So he must be active if they could give place to him. Let's look at 1 Timothy chapter 3. 1 Timothy chapter 3. Let's look at verse number 7. 1 Timothy 3, 7 says this. It says, Moreover, he must have a good report of them which is which are without, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. So he's he referring to those that desire the office of a bishop, and he's telling them how they should be. Then he says in verse 7 that he must be this one that want to be a bishop, he must be of a good report of them that are outside. Or else he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. So how is he going to fall into the snare or a trap of the devil if the devil don't exist no more? All right. Let's look at 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 26. Because one may say, well, you need revelation. You need revelation. Well, the scriptures are, rele are, are revelating themselves. The apostles are revelating. All right. So let's look at uh, first, Second Timothy chapter 2. Let's look at verse 26. And it says, and they, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. So if I read this in context, let's, let's just start at 24. He says, and the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil or out of the trap of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. So, how is this servant of the Lord going to recover themselves out of the trap of the devil and taken captive by him at his will if the devil's dead? So, if, they, if the devil is able to take someone captive at his will and able to Put a snare on them or a trap on them, then he must exist. I mean, he must exist. He can't be dead. Now, let's look at James chapter 4. The book of James chapter 4. Let's read number 7. James 4 7 said, This is James speaking after the resurrection of Jesus, after he had died and resurrected with the heaven. He said, Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil. And he will flee from you. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. A dead devil can't flee from you if he's dead. So why would James say, submit yourselves, therefore, to God, resist the devil if the devil if the devil dead, you ain't gotta resist something dead. 
So he says, resist the devil and he will flee. He will flee. That's not a past tense word. He will flee, meaning if you submit to God and you resist the devil, the devil will flee from you. He will get away from you. Let's look at one more. Revelations chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. Let's look at verse number 10. Revelation 2.10 says this. This is Jesus. He says, Fear none of those things which shall which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. Now, this is prophecy, Jesus speaking, and Jesus in heaven. And Jesus speaking prophecy from heaven, saying, Fear none of those things which are which thou shalt suffer. He's talking to the church in Smyrna. He says, Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. So, the, Jesus is telling them that he's going to give them the crown of life if they be faithful unto death. But he let them know that the devil shall cast some of you in prison. So a dead devil can't cast nobody in prison. I'm sorry, he just can't do it if he's dead. If he died in AD 70, none of these scriptures that the apostles taught would make any sense if the devil was dead. So I encourage those who may believe that the devil is dead. I encourage you to analyze these scriptures. Go back to this video. Look at the scriptures I brought up. And don't allow yourselves to be deceived thinking that the devil don't exist. And that the only thing out here today is just children of disobedience. So, you know, don't do that. In matter of fact, it was one scripture where, um, where the, the, the devils, they asked Jesus, says, we know who thou art, thou the son of God. He said, are oh, you come here to destroy us before the time? So before what time? Well, let's look at that real fast. Let's look at that scripture in the book of Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. I believe that is verse number 28. And when he was come to the other side into the country of the Gergesenes, there met him two possessed with devils coming out of the tombs, exceeding fierce, so that no man might pass by their way. And behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? Or thou come hither to torment us before the time? So he's going to torment them before the time, is what they're saying. So there is a point in time when the devils, and these are evil spirits, they're going to be tormented. Now, look at what Jesus said in the book of Matthew, chapter 25. And let's look at verse, I believe it's verse number, hmm, verse 41. Now, Jesus is talking about in the judgment when he returns. He said when he come in his glory and the holy angels with him, then he's going to sit on his throne in verse 31. And then I'm going to skip down to 41. When the Son of Man shall come in, in, come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Then verse 41, I'm going to skip down. He says, Then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. So the everlasting fire that's prepared for the devil and his angels, that's the lake of fire that, that um, it talks about in Revelation 20. And so the devil, he get cast into the lake of fire 
as we read earlier in Revelation chapter 20, um, verse 10 says, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophets are, and shall be consumed, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. But that don't take place till after the thousand year reign with Christ. So we can see that after the thousand year reign with Christ, that's the first resurrection, but you still got other people dead. But in Matthew 25, where I just read, that's when Jesus come back in the judgment and, pe and, and the people are before him at his right hand and his left hand, and he's judging. And then he's not going to tell those that were not saved, depart from me until he come back and judge. Then he said they're going to go be cast into the everlasting fire where the, that was prepared for the devil and his angels. But the devil don't get there until after the thousand year reign with Christ. So I hope you got an understanding. Repent, turn to Jesus, pray for me, I pray for you. Um, get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of God's Son, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And um, I'll see y'all next video.